So we've talked about this type of many-to-many, -many, so let's actually build one now, right? So this is 5B, the copy-paste file, right? This is where we're going to actually kind of create our medical history of the patient, you know, that kind of thing you fill out when you go to a doctor's office for the first time. You check off, have, I, have you ever had this, that, and so on, these different conditions, medical conditions in your past, right? Measles, mumps, whatever. Okay, and again, emphasizing this is an example Maybe it shouldn't be in the real world, but we're going to use it as a no payload, many to many, just things that we might check off. All right, so uh, I've changed the name slightly from the original data model. Hey, sorry, uh, sometimes names change to protect the innocent, right? Okay, so we're going to add these classes first of all. So let me get this in place here, all right? Remember what we have so far in our models, we have the doctor, we have the patient, and we have our medical trial. So I'm going to need a couple more now. I'm going to add a class here. For my, I'm just going to call it condition. It's our medical condition. And it's just going to have basically three simple properties. Okay, it's of course, it's primary key, the integer identity, just named ID. Notice it automatically added our data annotations using our condition name. Okay, display name, medical condition, can't leave it blank, uh, limit on the length, right? And finally, uh, we're going to have our collection of the associative or intersection entity objects, right? These are the ones that will support the many-to-many -many between patient and condition. So I know I called it medical history diagram. But we're just going to stick with the uh, approach of concatenating the two names together. So if this is condition, it's a many-to-many -many with patient. I'm going to call patient condition the entity that goes in between. So we'll add that next. And then the red underlining should go away. So we'll add another class which I'm going to call patient condition. And there we go. All right, now what is in here? Well, let me emphasize one last time. Well, maybe not be the last time, but I will emphasize it again. No load. In other words, there's nothing in here except the two foreign keys, nothing. And of course, these foreign keys are the same type we've used before, like even in our doctor to patient, right? When we remember we said the most important part of making a foreign key relationship is the uh, child object contained inside the parent, right? So this has got two parents, okay, condition and patient. So we see the condition object and patient object that satisfies that. But for our convenience, it's going to make one anyway. So let's actually have foreign key integers that we're uh, giving the name for and fully in control of. So our condition ID and patient ID, right? So, because remember, a many-to-many -many is really just two one-to-many relationships with a common child. There we go. Now, one more thing to finish building this happy family, we have to go to the patient. Okay. Again, it's not absolutely necessary, but uh, as a good practice, what we're going to do, maybe I'll do it down here after all these other foreign keys. The placement isn't really that critical. I'm going to put in... That exact same code we actually had inside of the condition, this I collection of patient conditions, right? Same display name, history, okay? Initialized to a new empty hash set of patient condition objects, right? Exactly the same code we had right here. So that goes in both parents, right? As they uh, relate to each other through this common child. Now, the other thing is, so far, we've just always gone with these integer identity primary keys, right? Well, we aren't following that naming condition. If we had an integer in here named patient condition ID, the system would assume that, oh, that must be what you want to use as the primary key. Or if we just had an integer called ID, it would assume that as well. So it's not going to be very clear exactly at this point. And there's other ways we could approach this, but we're going to stick with using the Fluent API. So let's come to that. That's in our medical office context, right? A couple of things we have to do in here. We want to add our DB sets. Okay, so we have two new DB sets for patient conditions and conditions. And then down in on model creating, here's where we're going to create the primary key. And we talked about this a minute ago. The primary key of this associative entity is actually going to be the combination of the two foreign keys. So we do that in code this way. Okay, we're saying, uh, model builder, look at this entity patient condition. Okay, we're going to have a key, right? The key is this using the lambda expression for a new object made up of the condition ID and the patient ID. So that's it. 
we can't have two patient conditions that have both the same condition ID and patient ID at the same time. And that makes for a reasonable primary key. Now, you know, composite keys like this aren't great for like a rapid lookup, right? Because you have to specify two separate things okay, in your where clause or whatever before you can actually identify the one record that matches, right? So it's not as efficient in terms of pulling data, but it does the job because we rarely actually have to pull the data by this actual key itself. Now the other aspect, okay, just like we did down here, we dealt with the whole cascade delete issue. We talked about this already. When we have this kind of happy family where we have two parents and with a common child, right? Often what we find in the real world is you want to restrict cascade delete from one parent, but not the other, right? And in this case, it makes sense that if you uh, needed to or wanted to remove a patient from the system, it would be silly to leave behind the uh, patient condition medical history record while without the patient, you wouldn't have anything to relate it to. So we would want the default cascade delete to happen in that case. However, on the other side of the family relationship here, from the condition down to the patient, we would want to be prevented. We shouldn't be able to delete a condition out of the system if any patients have that in their medical history. That's exactly what we're doing here. We're restricting the delete behavior on the relationship between condition and patient condition. Okay, now we've got to remember we better uh, add a migration and update the database. So opening my common commands will help here. So we come down to tools, the NuGet package manager, we'll get the console open. And I can grab this much of this command. Now I can't reuse the same name, so it can't be initial, right? So maybe I'll call it uh, conditions or history, history. And press enter. And I should have checked for build errors, but I didn't. So this will check for me. Build succeeded. There we go, right? So here are the changes to the database. We're going to create this conditions table. Okay. We're going to create patient conditions. And notice that how the foreign keys are both working here. One is allows cascade, the other is restricted, right? So we'll cascade changes if we delete a patient and away we go. Adding the uh, necessary indexes and the reverse would just be to drop the two tables and that would take care of everything. All right, okay, so next we will try to do the update database for our medical office context. We got errors, okay? Basically, it's because the database is there and there's some, some limitation to how well SQLite handles that. We can quickly quickly fix that. Go in the database and just recreate it next time I run, right? So I'll just delete the database, call update database again. It'll just create the whole thing in once and that will succeed. Okay, there we go. So we're ready to carry on and go forward with the next. All right. Now we're going to want to seed some data too. So let's come into back into again our medical office initializer. And where do we do this? Well, the conditions, they'd have to be before we try to assign any to patients. But if we're not going to do that till later on, okay, it has to be after we have to have both patients and conditions. So I can put to the very end because we already have patients. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is add some conditions. And this is pretty much similar to the stuff we've done before. Uh, I'm just going to check if there are any conditions. And if there aren't, okay, then I have a big long list here of some names of conditions. We're just going to do a single for each loop because I just have one list of condition names and basically building them, adding them, and saving changes. And that's it. Okay, so that'll give us some conditions. So now at this point, I have patients, I have conditions. So I would be free to actually start assigning some medical history. Now I could do this in a few ways. I could, and maybe I really should, uh, you know, create a whole bunch with random number generators and so on. But you know, I just want to point out I can just add a few. Right? I can use go back to the old add range. But remember, for every patient condition, there's only two two pieces of information that go in there: the two foreign keys, which are primary keys on each side of the family, each parent, right? A condition ID has to be uh, an actual ID of a condition in the system. Same thing with patient ID. 
So, you know, I could just randomly select them, same way we've done, but here I'm just going to specifically give Fred Flintstone cancer, uh, also cardiac disease, and Wilma gets diabetes, right? And those will be assigned. So it's up to you. If you want to add more, feel free, but that'll get some basics involved. Okay, so that should work. Next time I run, it'll actually seed that in. All right, so now we want to see the medical history, at least to some degree, on the patient index, details, and delete views, right? So maybe I'm going to clean up the screen here a little bit, close all these tabs so we don't get confused where we're at. So let's start with the patient index. So coming down to views, we'll come to the patient index. We're going to add a new column here for medical history. I'm going to put it right before the doctor, not quite at the very end, but before the doctor. Okay, so right here. We put a table header tag pair, display name for our patient conditions. And then down here in the same spot, so right before the doctor, right? In here, I'll add a table data tag pair. Right, we're inside it. Okay, we have a for each loop, just looping through all the member each item as we go through here is a patient. So the patient conditions, and we will just show the name of the condition and a BR tag. So it must be lifted, listed one on top of each other, right? Okay, no, I don't know why that's indented so much. There we go. All right, so that should do the job there to get it on the index view. Now for details and delete. Okay. These both use the same style of present presenting information, so the exact same code works in both. So right before doctor, there's our display name for patient conditions, and again, our for each loop, right? Using the same column sizes should be fine. So just come to the delete page now, exact the same code. I'll put it in the same place right before doctor, and there we are. Our patient conditions. So there's our medical history everywhere. Okay, so that's good. The the views are ready to show it, but we have to make sure <clears throat> that we are including it in the data sent to these views, right? So I'm just going to save them all. Get my mouse on the mouse pad helps. Let's come back to the actual controller then, patient's controller. And what we need to do is add the include. Ah, but this gets interesting because we're not just including one entity, right? Because to get the name of the condition coming from patient, we have to walk down to the child, that associative entity, patient condition, and back up the other side of the relationship to get to the actual condition where the name is stored. So how's that going to look here? Well, we're going to do a dot include, right? P goes to P dot. Um, <coughs> Our, our patient condition, sorry, I just <laughs> had to cough. Oh, P dot patient conditions, right? So that gets us down, but we have to then include. Condition, there we go. So, you know, you could do this like that, but, you know, whenever I do a then include, I tend to sacrifice the screen width a little bit and keep it on one line. It just visually, to me, it helps me see that, okay, well, these includes are directly just between the two tables. This one is a bridge through patient conditions back up to the actual condition, right? So it includes all of that uh, data in the results returned. So it'll be a hierarchical result set, so to speak. Every patient will include all these things, the actual doctor object, the medical trial object, if it's applicable. And then it'll contain the patient conditions collection. Then each one will have the actual condition populated in it as well, right? Now for both the uh, uh, delete and, and details actions, we're gonna basically do the same thing. So I'll just put the exact same includes in here. And then coming down to delete, remember we have a pair here. We have the actual 
uh, get and then the post. So we have to deal with both here. So in the get, right, we're including the doctor. We'll also include the patient conditions and the condition. And, you know, I know it, it got missed earlier, but it's not too late. We can add to include the medical trial. That should have been there all along. Well, at least for when we added medical trials. Okay, so we're going to do the same code here in the post, right? And there we go. Oh, come on. Give me a break. Okay. All right, so now we're getting all the data. We're pulling all this. I mean, just to delete it might be overkill, except if we have to redisplay the patient, we want to make sure it includes all the related information that we want to display on the screen. Okay, so that gets the uh, index, details, and delete all taken care of. But the biggest challenge now is managing this medical history during the actual create and update process, right? I'm going to leave the controller open, but I'm going to get rid of these views. We're going to be focusing on both the actual create and update. So we'll come down to the views again. I'll need the create and the uh, edit. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so maybe I'll start with the edit. Okay. Now, what we really want on here is we've talked about either a collection of checkboxes to check off each option, or maybe a couple of lists, right, where we could move them back and forth between two lists, the ones that are selected and the ones that aren't. Well, we're going to do checkboxes at this stage in this part of the demo. Now, to represent each checkbox on the screen, this is our first real chance to see that sometimes we need to have a class that isn't exactly one of the model classes that we persist to the database, right? But uh, something that maybe combines information from multiple models or for whatever reason okay, is a convenience for us to have objects of this type for building the UI itself. And that's exactly what's going on. So. You know, remember we have all of our we have our models folder with all the models that relate to the database, but we're going to have a separate folder. Then some some people put them right in the models folder as well. I like to keep them as actually our online tutorial does uh, in a separate folder. So that'll be my first step. I'm going to come up here, right click, we're going to add a new folder. I'm going to call the folder View Models. Because unlike database models, right, these are ones that will appear, be used to help build things to display on the screen. Now we'll add a class in here. Now, because we might have multiple, by the time we're done, things that we want to represent with check boxes or check options, right? I'm just going to make this sort of a generic name, a check option, okay? And inside, we're going to have three properties that we could reuse for different uh, situations. Okay, one is the ID, right? One is the display text. That's the text we would normally show beside the checkbox. And some logical value, a Boolean, to keep track of whether or not the checkbox is checked, for example. Now, I'm going to avoid the word checked because we can use this for things other than checkboxes, right? I'm just going to say assigned. So it's going to be a true or false. Is this one selected, assigned, checked, whichever term you prefer to use. But I'm going to stick with assigned here in terms of the property of the class. Okay, that's good. So notice that it is a slightly different namespace. It's the view models namespace because of how we set it up inside of the actual uh, folder structure of the solution. So uh, now coming back to the patient's controller, we need to do some work first. Okay, if I go control MO for a second, just shrink everything down. Okay, so, you know, we've gone through this before. We have index, we have details, two creates, two edits, two deletes and then stuff we've been adding. <laughs> so all the quote stuff I've been adding, like our uh, popular dropdown list and so on, I've been doing that uh, you know, in this general spot, so to speak, at the end, but usually right before that final scaffolded patient exists type of thing. So here is where I'm gonna add my two new methods, right? These are gonna be methods I might call from more than one place, okay? So they can be private, available just inside here. The first one is going to be my populate assigned condition data. So it's kind of the same idea as populate dropdown. Listen that you're preparing information that's going to be used to display on the screen. In this case, I'm preparing a collection of these uh, 
check option view model objects to represent all the checkboxes that I want to put up on the screen, right? Now, just a note here, we pass in the actual patient object. And for it to work, we have to have included the patient conditions in the patient. Well, good thing we did that, right? Uh, or we will we'll make sure that we do, okay? All right, so then we come in here, we have our patient. So I'm gonna go to the database directly and grab all the conditions in the system, okay? That's all the options that we're going to present to the user to choose from, right? Then I need to know, well, what options maybe, because I can reuse this for both create and for edit, right? Are there any options? And if there are, what are they that have already been assigned to this particular patient or checked off for this patient, right? So I, I have the patient object. I can examine their collection, patient conditions collection, and select all the, now notice it's not an ID. Remember this has that composite primary key made up of the two things, the patient ID and the condition ID. Well, I don't have to worry about the patient ID. I actually have one patient here. So whatever the, their ID is, <laughs> is gonna be that value. So it's all the condition IDs. That's the collection I'm after here as a hash set of integers, because it is an integer. And that gives me all the current ones that are already selected for this given patient, right? So then I create my collection of uh, a list of my check option VM objects, okay, basically my checkboxes. And then as I go through each and every option inside the database, I add a checkbox for each one, okay, signing the ID and the condition name will become my display text. And this is a logical operation in that, okay, if the current IDs contains, okay, the ID of this particular option, this particular condition, then this will return true, otherwise it will return false, which works fine for my Boolean true-false assigned property. So every checkbox will know whether or not it should be checked by having that property there. Finally, all I do is I grab this collection of checkboxes and throw it in the view data as condition options, right? But a bing and that will give the data to show or to build the user interface when I get to that point. All right, now while we're here though, I'm gonna grab the code for the other part. That's easy, that's the easy part in a sense. We're just building the actual um, uh, data to use to build the checkboxes on the screen, right? Now we're gonna talk about the code that will be used to update the database depending on what checkboxes are checked, et cetera, right? So this we're calling update patient conditions. And we need two things. We need the patient, of course, again, right? Because they might have some checked now, Okay, and so on and so forth. And then we need a collection of all the ones that are actually currently selected, all the options that are selected, or if you want to put it this way, all the check boxes that are checked, right? Now that comes in as strings. That's why we're using a string array because all data that gets posted to any website initially comes in as a string, right? Okay, so what we can do is, hey, if nothing was checked, then this selected options, that'll be null. So all we have to do, we don't have to worry about what the old values were. <laughs> we can just set the entire collection equal to a new empty list, right? And that basically, if there were options previously there, yeah, well, they're gone, right? Because we've emptied it out. We've replaced that collection with a new empty collection. There we go. We can return and our job is done. Now, assuming at least one thing is checked. And now, of course, we have to think it might have been checked before, so I never changed it. It might be a new check, or there might be one that was checked before, but now is gone, right? We have to deal with all those variations. So we grab our selected options, okay? And we're going to put that into a collection here, selected options, hash set. And here's my hash set of integers, okay? For the actual patient to update, what do they have currently, right? In their uh, history, right? So this is the current patient we're working with, their patient conditions collection. So again, we just select all the condition IDs, okay? The IDs are the currently selected conditions, okay? And we stick that in here, right? Then with a for each loop, we consider each and everything in the system, all the conditions there are, right? And for each one, as we go through, that's our option, right? So then we start doing some logical tests, right? So if our selected ones, okay, that's the ones that are actually checked off when they submitted the form to be processed, if that contains, the one that we're considering as we loop through all of them, then, hey, it's checked. So then what do we have to know? All right, well, does the patient already have it, right? 
Okay, if it's not true that they already have it, then we have to add it, right? So we go to our patient update to their patient conditions and we add that condition. We do that by creating a patient condition object, right? Where the ID is of course our patient ID. Uh, sorry, the patient ID is the ID of our patient update and the condition ID we get from the ID of the option itself. And that way we're adding that to the system, right? Now, nothing to do if this returns false, we're done. But the else branch on this, okay, is different, right? So the checkbox is not checked, but we actually say, oh, well, did they remove the checkbox? So if we check the patient option hash set, right? And if it contains that ID, then we say it is uh, currently in their history, right? So we have to remove it because they had it in their history. So clearly the user has removed the checkbox or unchecked the checkbox, right? So then we build the condition to remove, right? Same kind of way. And uh, we just come through with the condition ID matches. We pull it from our patient conditions collection. And then we just pass that with dot remove to our DB context. And that will actually delete that record out of the uh, patient condition table. And that's it. By the time we loop through all of them, they will have either been added or removed appropriately as per what has been checked and unchecked on the user interface. Now this is straight out of the online tutorial. So read the author's description of how this works as well. Don't just rely on mine if you find my explanation confusing. Okay, so that gets our two new methods that we're gonna use, one for populating the data and one for actually doing the updates that can happen on both a create or an edit. All right, so coming back up now uh, in the create get, all we really have to do is call populate assigned condition data, right? But yeah, we have to have the way we've set up the code, we have to have a patient, right? So I'm just gonna create a new blank patient object and use that to pass in to satisfy the need to have a patient. So I just made it so that guaranteed there's nothing checked off, right? So when this appears on the screen, none of the options will be selected, checkboxes checked, anything like that, right? There we go, well, that gets the get ready to display. Now, when it comes to the post, remember one of the things that we needed in order to update, okay, this information, we need to know what are the current status of all those checkboxes, right? And that will, come in because you'll see we're going to give each and every checkbox the same name. So how any web application works, what you get then in the post data is a collection of uh, objects all in the same name, basically an array, right? So it'd be a string array called selected options. And for everyone that's checked, it's included. The ones that aren't just simply aren't even included, right? So that gives us the information we need coming in. Then coming into the try block, I do this even before your check on validation, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna add all the selected options. Now remember, we're starting from scratch, so we don't have to worry about old values, right? All we have to do is deal with the values that are currently selected, right? So we can check, first of all, maybe nothing was checked. <laughs> so if selected options is null, well, there's nothing to do, right? They didn't check off any options. Okay, but as long as it's not null, then we're just gonna go through each one, each selected option, and basically create a new patient condition, okay? And then we add it to the patient conditions collection of our patient object as we go. And that's it, okay? Now, of course, uh, think about what we're doing here, okay? We're taking this patient that up to now, the patient object, despite all the relationships it's been involved in, has basically been flat, right? It has its collection of properties, okay? We haven't had to worry about anything else. But now, this is a related collection that is stored inside the patient, right? The patient conditions. So in order to do an insert, for example, of, of this kind of situation, you did an exercise like that in your database fundamentals, but you did it as a transaction, right? You would insert the parent record, right? Find out with scope identity or something like that, what the new primary key value of that patient record was. And then you could go on inside the transaction and insert one or more related child records, whatever the case required, right? If anything failed anywhere along the line, because it was a transaction, you would just roll the whole thing back and put the data back 
same way it was before you attempted to do this modification, right? Well, that's exactly what's going to happen here. I know you're disappointed. You were looking forward to writing that transaction yourself, but I'm sorry. Entity Framework does it automatically for you. I know I can hear the groans and the disappointment, but hopefully you'll learn to get over it. So it will automatically generate a transaction, take care of all of that work for us. All we have to really worry about is what if it can't succeed? Well, what happens with the transaction? It rolls back. Well, not only does it create the transaction, it will say, oh, it failed. Well, let's try it again. <laughs> Maybe a record was locked because of something else going on in the system. It might work the next time. It will try it up to five, kind of five times. It will try to complete the entire transaction. After that point, it's going to give up and say, you know what? I have reached what? I've reached my re retry limit. And it would throw this type of an exception, a retry limit exception, right? So we're just going to add into our model state an error just to give feedback to the user saying, unable to save changes after multiple attempts, right? And that will make it pretty clear that, no, we weren't able to save that. We tried many times, but we could not do so. Okay. And then, of course, it'll go on and we'll catch other types of exceptions that might happen after that. All right. Now, before we go back, though, what if there is a problem? Maybe it's a validation issue. It wasn't even with that transaction. But for whatever reason, we weren't able to save changes, right? Then we're going to redisplay the view. And this is, of course, where all these extra error messages we're adding to the model state get a chance to be displayed to the user. So before we redisplay the view, what do we have to do? Well, just like we are populating our dropdown lists, we also want to populate our assigned condition data. Okay. We pass in the patient, okay, so it will be updated with all the current options that the user was trying to save, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that way the same data comes back to the screen that left it when they click the button. Okay, so that's a create, the create process taken care of. Edit is similar, but a little bit, little bit different as well as edit often is, right? In edit get, once again, we need to add our includes, okay? So here we've been doing find async, right, in the edit get. Uh, that's not good enough anymore. You can't do find async with any include. So we're going to have to change that here. Right, so I can include my patient conditions and the condition. And you might say, hey, how come you're not including uh, things like the medical trial? Well, remember, on an edit page, that's in a drop-down list. Right? So we don't need that object inside here. We just need the actual foreign key value and we're good. Right? Same with the doctor. We don't need the doctor in here because we're editing. We're, we're preparing the edit view and those things are in separate uh, drop down lists or selects. Right? But this we need in mainly for the handling the many to many relationship. Okay. All right. And don't forget this. We also have to prepare the checkboxes to be displayed. So we need to populate assigned condition data. I don't know, should I be glad that this <laughs> suggests the code for me? I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite used to that. Populate assigned condition data. There we go. All right, so that gets the get in place. Now, how about the post for edit? Okay, we're almost done here. All right, again, once more, we need our parameter. We need to know what checkboxes were checked, right? Or what options were selected in the user interface. So that'll be our selected options. Okay, and when we go to get the patient update, right, we need to have our includes in there, at least the ones here for the many-to-many uh, -many relationship. All right. Now, that's fine down here. Uh, before we do our try-update model, right, that's where we're going to call it to update our medical history. We'll update the patient conditions, okay? We'll pass in the selected options that came in as we uh, called the post for edit and the patient update that we got from the database. So this has, remember, this has right from the database all the old options that were checked off. This represents all the current state of the options. Maybe the users unchecked some and checked other ones, right? But the way we wrote this method, this update patient conditions, it will modify our patient update so it has the corresponding values, right? 
uh, ready to work with the selected options. Okay, and really, um, that takes care of that. We don't have to do anything here in our try update model. It's perfectly fine, but we do want to add our catch block in case the transaction that will be created to do all that updating fails, right? Fails repeatedly. So I have our retry limit exception, okay, unable to save changes after multiple attempts. And then that is almost it, except before we return the view, once more, we need to populate the assigned condition data, passing our patient to update, right, so they can do so. Okay. So that gets all the work done that we need to do in the controller. Now the controller is passing all the information it needs to the views. The last thing we have to do is fix up the two views, the create view and the edit view. And actually the same code goes on each one, right? So here's my create view and my edit view. Where am I gonna put it? Eh, maybe I'm gonna put it right near the bottom, right? Um, oh, I'm a doctor and then medical trial here on create. How do I have it in edit? Kind of, sorry, I'm diverting for a second. Uh, oh, see, doctor's last and medical trial was in front. Yeah, I prefer that arrangement. I'm going to fix the create. I must have added it at the end, but I prefer it this way. Okay. Um, coming back to create. No. Sorry, I'll do it this way. So we have our edit. So do I want it above the medical trial, after the medical trial? or maybe even after both. I'm gonna put it in front of both. So it's above both drop-down lists. I'm gonna make a bit of white space here on the page, right? So it's gonna come after the email address and before either our drop-down list for medical trials or doctors. Now I have the code right in my copy paste file. So I'll just grab it out of there. Basically see how each of these is inside of a div, okay, with a form group. Right, so I'm going to have, first of all, a label, okay, display name for our patient conditions, right? And then inside, right beside it then, we're going to have this little table, right? We're going to make a row, the way I have it laid out here, for every two checkboxes. So we'll show two checkboxes side to side and start a new row of checkboxes. If you made that three, you'd have three side by side, et cetera, right? Okay, again, using the modules function to detect every, time, every two, every three, whatever you want, right? I find that because it's going to be in a column on the page, okay, two is enough. All right. So basically, what are we doing here? We go to our view bag, get those condition options, okay, and that's our check boxes. Notice that we have the fully, uh, don't have namespaces per se, so we have the fully qualified class here. All right. We have a list of those, and we go through each one, okay, and we're going to for every second one, start a new row, but in the meantime, we just create an input for each one. So the input type is checkbox, name, ah, look at that. They all have the same name. We touched on that earlier. That's how it works in any web page. If you have elements of the same name, when you submit, okay, then they come through as an array. So they all have the same name. Of course, the value will be different. We're gonna set it up to be the checkbox.id, which is actually the ID of the condition, right? That is being checked off. All right, beside it, oh, sorry, inter in, internally inside the checkbox, we uh, have checked equals checked showing up if it is assigned. So if assigned is true, we put in checked equals checked. Otherwise, we basically just add an empty string, right, inside the opening tag of the checkbox, the input type, okay? And then beside it, we'll put the display text, right? That's actually the name of the condition will appear beside. I just threw in a couple white spaces. <laughs> non-breaking spaces, because I felt I needed a bit of white space there. All right, so there'll be one of those for every possible condition, whether or not it's checked, that comes from this logical value of assigned. And that's it, so that should work here. Exact same code will work on the create as well, but I am gonna rearrange this a little bit. I'll, I'll first of all, get that in place. And then uh, this bugging me that uh, I want the medical trial above above the actual doctrine. Okay, so I think this is good. So let me just run it and we'll actually see. Okay, so what do we see on the screen? If I go to patients, all right, look at that. So here's our history. These are the three values that I seeded into Fred and Wilma, right? So if I click edit, 
And down here, here are it's my history, all my check boxes. So cancer and cardiac disease, right? So I'm going to add diabetes here. Okay, so we're adding a new one to Fred Flintstone. So I'll just click save and look at that. Okay, diabetes has been added. So we have all three options showing here in the medical history for Fred Flintstone. If I go back into edit, you know, I don't know what I was thinking. No, 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 I was a different patient. Fred never had cancer. Okay, I'll uncheck that one and we see now it is gone. So the edit process is working. If I do create new, right, then see none of them are checked as it is appropriate, but I could check off two or three. And uh, if I click submit or create, right, I get all the validation going on on the client side. Uh, my point was I was going to try, but of course I forget that it doesn't let me submit it till it's valid. Uh, if there was a problem in the database, it would come back with the same values checked. Trust me, but test it yourself at some point. Anyway, good. All right. Well, we seem to be working. We have our many to many. Notice we don't really need. Now I probably should have a controller so I can maintain conditions just like I probably should have one for my medical trials as well. So I can add a new medical trial, add a new condition and things like that. But I'm saving that up because we're going to deal with all of those lookup type pieces of information at once. Okay. So don't worry, that is coming, I promise you. But in the meantime, we have a fully functional many to many relationship. I can go into details. So here they are. Okay. So for Wilma, she just has the one. Uh, let me edit somebody else. So Jane S. Doe. Let's edit Jane. Boy, she she had a lot of things go on go off, <laughs> killed her for her in the past. Boy, what hasn't she had? Hardly anything has she never had, right? Lots and lots of stuff here. If we go to details, right, you can see them all listed here as well. And okay, and back to the list. Now, something else we'll get into. You know, maybe that's really not a good design having all these listed here. So we'll talk about. Well, maybe we want to have some kind of just like we did here. We found ways to you know, give the information without it taking up too much screen space. That's something to look forward to. We'll talk about different tips and tricks on how to uh, handle that kind of situation to increase the value of what is shown on the screen. But for now, success. We actually have it working. We have a good one-to-many relationship, sorry, many-to-many -many relationship fully in, in force, and we can maintain it beautifully.